Imagine you're 200 metres below the surface of the ocean, sealed inside a steel tube. The lights are dim. The only sound is the low hum of machinery and the soft creak of metal under pressure. Suddenly, a muffled explosion. The hull shudders. A depth charge. Another one follows, closer this time. The crew says nothing, but every eye is locked on the sonar screen. Somewhere above, an enemy ship is searching, listening. You're deep underwater, so they can't see you. But what if they can hear you? Sound travels as a longitudinal wave, which just means the vibrations happen in the same direction the wave is going. A simple way to picture this is with a spring. If you squeeze a few coils together at one end and let go, you'll see a compression pulse move down the spring. That's pretty much what sound does, only instead of metal coils, it's vibrating particles in a fluid. In water, sound moves about four times faster than in air. That's why the ocean is terrifyingly good at carrying sound. It's great if you're trying to listen. But if you're in a submarine and trying to stay hidden, it's a total nightmare. Even the hum of a motor or the swish of a propeller can give away your location over long distances. When navies want to track each other underwater, they use sonar, which stands for sound navigation and ranging. There are two main types. Active sonar works a bit like echolocation, the same technique bats and dolphins use. A device with sound sensors called transducers sends out a sound pulse, what sailors call a ping, and then listens for the echoes bouncing off objects in the water. It does that by knowing what the speed of sound is in water, which is roughly 1500 meters per second, but that varies a little due to salinity, temperature and pressure multiplied by how long it took that ping to get there and back again, then divided by two. That can tell them how far away an object is, but the system can also give them shape by measuring the target strength. For this, you need to divide how intense the sound beam was when it reflected off the object, its incident intensity, by how much of that bounced back, its reflected intensity, and then multiply that by 10 log 10, for reasons we won't get into right now. The shape, angle, and material of the object the pulse is bouncing off all affect the TS. But if you get a high TS, you're probably looking at something like a submarine. A low TS, and it might be a fish. It's a powerful method and really accurate, but it comes with a huge trade-off. When a dolphin chirps in the ocean, it gives away its location. Similarly, a submarine using active sonar does the same thing. That loud, artificial ping travels through water faster and farther than most sounds. For other submarines or surface ships listening with passive sonar, that ping is like turning on a flashlight in a pitch black room. It announces your presence known to anyone nearby, including the enemy. That's why active sonar is rarely used during stealth missions. It's mostly saved for emergencies, training, or when being precise matters more than staying hidden. During silent patrols, subs rely on listening, not shouting. So unless you're already in combat, active sonar is usually a last resort. Which is why passive sonar listens carefully, because every vessel, no matter how stealthy, has its own heartbeat. Every boat, no matter how well designed, creates a unique sound profile. A fingerprint made from engine hums, pump rhythms, propeller spins, and even how water flows over the hull. These sounds travel far and can be distinctive enough to identify. Passive sonar is mainly used to pick up noise from other marine objects. Unlike active sonar, it doesn't send out its own signals, which is great for military ships that want to stay hidden or scientific missions that focus on quietly listening to the ocean. It just picks up sound waves coming toward it. Submarines don't just use onboard hydrophones to listen. They often drag a long cable behind them called a towed array sonar. These sensors stretch out for hundreds of meters and help submarines hear better over long distances, especially at low frequencies. And because the array is far away from the noisy machinery inside the sub, the signal is much clearer. Modern navies keep secret libraries of sounds made by different ships. When a passive sonar system picks up a sound, it doesn't just alert the crew, it compares that sound to stored patterns. 
Machine learning algorithms can even help refine the match, identifying the likely class, propulsion type, and sometimes even the specific vessel. So in the deep ocean, where you can't see a thing, it's often the sound of a ship that gives it away, not just to human ears, but to a trained machine listening silently in the dark. If you can hear the other vessels before they hear you, you are in control. That's why submarines are designed for silence. Everything on board is isolated. Engines are mounted on rubber, machinery is suspended, and even footsteps are muffled. Rotating parts are balanced to get rid of vibrations. The goal is to blend in with the natural background noise of the ocean, waves, fish, and even distant currents. Because in this world, if you make a sound, you might not get a second chance. Silence isn't just a tactic in submarine warfare. It's an entire design philosophy. To begin with, the hull of a stealth submarine is usually covered in a special layer of anechoic tiles. These sound-absorbing panels are arranged like scales over the metal surface. They're usually made from synthetic rubber or polymer composites, and are often filled with materials like air pockets or microbubbles. Their job is twofold. They keep the submarine's noise from escaping into the water, and they disrupt and absorb incoming sonar pings, making it harder to detect active scans. Think of sonar waves like ripples on a pond. When they hit a flat metal surface, they bounce back sharply, making the submarine easier to find. But when those waves hit the uneven, rubbery surface of the anechoic tiles, they get scattered, absorbed, and weakened. Some of that energy even turns into tiny amounts of heat, while some gets lost inside the material. Some advanced tiles even vary in density and thickness across their surface to absorb a broader range of sonar frequencies. However, the exact composition and layering techniques used on modern military submarines are usually classified, especially for nations like the US, Russia, and China. What we do know is that engineers designed these tiles not just for stealth, but also to handle deep sea pressure and harsh saltwater environments without peeling off or falling apart. Even the propulsion system is built for stealth. Traditional propellers are noisy, especially when they can spin fast. They create tiny air bubbles through a process called cavitation. This happens because when water pressure drops, the boiling point of water also drops and vice versa. According to Bernoulli's principle, the faster the water flows, like it does on a propeller's trailing edge when it spins too quickly, the lower the pressure. The water around it then boils and forms vapor bubbles that collapse violently, creating shock waves and telltale noise that can travel for miles. To tackle this, modern submarines use specially shaped propeller blades, often with larger diameters and slower rotation speeds. Some even use pump jet propulsors, a sort of shrouded propeller system that cuts down on cavitation and mutes sound. Less cavitation means less noise, and that's the ultimate goal for submarine stealth. And while the submarine might worry about sonar, the rest of us should be worried about public Wi-Fi. Your device is constantly exchanging signals across global servers, and unless you're protected, that data, your location, your searches, even your habits, can be tracked, stored, and sold. That's why we use CyberGhost VPN. And we're not alone. Over 38 million people rely on it worldwide. They've got a fantastic score on Trustpilot with over 20,000 excellent reviews. CyberGhost encrypts your internet traffic and reroutes it through secure servers in over 100 countries. That means your IP address is hidden, your location is private, and your digital trail about as indetectable as a submarine. Not even CyberGhost can see what you're doing. And no, incognito mode doesn't cut it. That's a local disguise. If you like streaming documentaries or exploring overseas content, CyberGhost lets you access Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, sports, and more from different regions. It works on up to seven devices at once, including iOS, Android, and even your smart TV. And right now, they're offering our viewers a deal. Just $2.03 a month with four extra months free. And if you change your mind, there's a 45-day money-back guarantee. It's fast, secure, with 24-7 live support. 
To find out more, check the link in the description. And thank you to CyberGhost for sponsoring this video. Invisibility protects you online, and inside a submarine, that same principle rests on the crew's silence. Submariners are trained to move carefully, avoiding dropped tools or slammed hatches. Even daily operations are planned with silence in mind. One careless bang could echo through the water and give away the vessel's position. All this effort, from the shape of a blade to the padding under a pump, adds up to one goal, making the submarine blend into the background hum of the ocean. Even the quietest submarine isn't truly invisible. But the ocean itself offers some great ways to hide if you understand how sound travels through it. The key lies in how the speed of sound changes in seawater. As was mentioned earlier, it's not constant. It depends on temperature, pressure, and even salinity. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure, which also increases sound speed. And saltier water makes sound move faster than it does in fresh water. These three variables combine to create a sound velocity profile that shows how sound speed changes with depth. In many parts of the ocean, there's a point where sound travels slowest, forming a natural acoustic trap. One of the most important features this creates is the thermocline, a layer where the temperature, and so the speed of any sound, drops quickly as you go deeper. When sound waves hit this layer, they either refract or reflect, often trapping sound above or below it. A submarine sitting below the thermocline can be almost invisible to sonar scanning from above. Even deeper, there's an even more interesting feature called the Deep Sound Channel, or the SOFAR Channel. It's a horizontal layer in the ocean where sound speed reaches a minimum and then increases both above and below. This makes the sound waves bend back toward the center of the channel, allowing them to travel thousands of kilometers with minimal loss. Submarines can hide here to listen for distant ships or other subs, but it's a double-edged sword. If they make a noise, that sound can travel just as far. Then there are shadow zones, regions where the sound, due to refraction, simply doesn't reach. Like light getting blocked by an object, these zones are acoustic blind spots. By studying the SVP and ocean topography, submarines can hide in these zones to avoid being detected. Submarines also use terrain masking. In shallow or coastal waters, they hug the seabed or navigate along underwater ridges. These features block sonar paths and create localized shadow zones that further hide their presence. In reality, the ocean isn't just a flat space. It's a constantly shifting matrix of sound highways, tunnels, mirrors, and dead zones. Submariners, along with oceanographers and acoustic engineers, have learned to read it like a map. Back on your submarine, another depth charge whistles by, closer this time. The hull creaks under pressure. You're certain they can't hear you. The engines are quiet, the pumps are isolated, and the propeller is barely spinning. So what's giving you away? Every submarine emits a magnetic field, just like any massive object made of steel moving through Earth's magnetic environment. That field can be detected by magnetic anomaly detectors, especially when they're fitted to aircraft looking for subs near the surface. To counter this, modern submarines use degaussing systems. These are coils built into the hull that create opposing magnetic fields, cancelling out their own magnetic signature. It's like wiping away your fingerprint while you're still touching something. Then there's heat. Submarines generate a lot of heat from engines, electronics, and even the crew. This heat can leak out through the hull and create a thermal trace that infrared sensors can pick up. So, designers add cooling systems, insulate hot machinery, and vent warm water out in slow, controlled ways to avoid thermal detection. Even radar can be a threat, especially when a submarine surfaces or raises a periscope. That tiny mast might not look like much, but if it reflects radar waves, it turns into a bright spot in the sky for surveillance aircraft. That's why periscopes and antennas are now designed with stealth in mind, as you find in modern stealth aircraft, like the B-2 Spirit. 
angled surfaces, radar absorbent materials and coatings that scatter signals instead of bouncing them back to the source. And finally, there's non-acoustic detection. Advanced methods like tracking changes in water temperature, pressure or even tiny disturbances in the ocean caused by a moving sub. Some of these techniques are still experimental, but they show that stealth is an arms race. As detection tools improve, so must the ways submarines hide. During the design stage, naval architects use computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, to study how these structures interact with water when the submarine is near the surface. Even a small bump at periscope depth can disturb the water's surface, creating a visible wake or a raised bow wave, both of which can be spotted by satellites or patrol aircraft. With CFD simulations, Engineers test different shapes of masts and periscopes to see how water flows around them. The goal is to cut down on turbulence, lower bow waves and delay surface disturbances. By picking shapes that blend smoothly into the flow, submarines can pass beneath the surface, leaving minimal traces behind and staying hidden from sonar, aerial surveillance and surface watchers. But sometimes stealth can go too far. One of the biggest risks in submarine warfare isn't just getting spotted, it's not spotting each other. There have been actual cases where two stealth submarines ran into each other underwater, not because they were being aggressive, but because they were so focused on being invisible that they didn't see each other coming. Back in 2009, two nuclear submarines, one from the United Kingdom, the other from France, collided deep beneath the Atlantic. Both vessels were armed. Both were running silently and neither crew realised what was happening until after the impact. Thankfully, no one was injured and there was no risk to the nuclear material. Even nature becomes a threat. Underwater landslides, temperature changes and sudden shifts in ocean currents can give away a sub's position, or worse, force it into unsafe depths. For all the science and engineering that goes into making submarines invisible, the real question is, why? Why bother with all that effort to hide underwater? The answer lies in strategy. A stealth submarine isn't just a machine, it's a silent chess piece that can influence entire regions without ever coming up for air. Countries use submarines not just for patrols, but to deter. Just knowing a stealth submarine might be lurking nearby can change what opposing forces or even entire nations decide to do. So, behind all that silence, and the invisible hulls, and the thermoclines and rubber tiles, is a very loud message. We are here, even if you cannot see us. Of course, the ultimate stealth machines are the nuclear subs that can stay hidden for months at a time. To find out more about them, subscribe and stay tuned. Just a quick reminder, CyberGhost VPN is still running this fantastic offer. $2, 3 cents a month, 4 months free, and 45 days to try it risk-free. Protect your privacy, stream from anywhere, and stay invisible online. The link's down below. Thank you to all our patrons, and see you next time.